from Ohio? Yeah, bro. Ohio lives in Arizona. Hey, let go. Pick em pop, big on Brian Petrie, giving out the lot. One is mortal, you know it won't miss. Gonna take a shot, dog lot, that's the underdog. Yeah, they in the hunt. Send them home, that's KO or submission. Yeah, somebody done. Slime ball, yeah, that's the parlay. We gonna make it known. Pick em pop from MMA takes. Yeah, let's get it going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big Griff hitting you in the fucking face with the intros. UFC 300 week, baby! <laughs> Jack to the tits for this one, boys. I've been at work off. Excuse me, let me let me start that again. Take two. I've been off work all week. Took a vacation this week, you know, because it's 300 week, right? It's only Wednesday, and it, it, it's driving me nuts. It needs to be Saturday, but guess what? This is the best part of the week right now. I got my boys here. We got Timbo in the building in a hotel room. I can't tell you what city he's in, but just look over your shoulder, okay? You, you know, you might be in your town looking, you know, looking. And we got Christian. Christian, you sitting in the dark right now? What's going on, Colorado boy? It's it's just this. I think it's that light behind me. It's still okay. sunny out right here. All right, Christian. Really... Christian, a little dark on the video side, so we apologize there. And yeah, uh, me... but we're here, baby. We're here. This card is absolutely fucking stacked, top to bottom stacked every fight could be a fight night main event i would say fight night main event i think every every one of these fights could be an apex fight night or even i pay for these to come to cincinnati main events for fight night you know what i mean there's some solid solid fights on this card cannot wait to get into it before let's look at the chat here david tomato hype for this one tonight let's go fellas we appreciate you david we got crone here lock in lock in baby lock in big takes b Big app, that's right, Jeannie. Jeannie's here, baby. Alex, uh, Alec, excuse me, Blessed Express. Choo choo, motherfuckers. Blessed Express. Who's gonna pick in Max tonight? Tim, my Marlins are one and 11. What do I do with my life? Timbo, answer Jeannie. What do you do when his Marlins are one and 11? Don't watch when you play the Braves, that's for sure. Oh, Timbo rocking hey, that A's right there. Rocking it, that A's. Here in our team sucks here in Colorado, but uh, I have to yeah. pump this out for mcdonald's every time the rockies hit a double you get a free mcdouble the next day so check your local markets for that that's, that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i can name a colorado rocky right now todd helton what's up bitch todd helton the legend todd helton, yeah. first base todd helton uh, well, you, always bet, you always bet the overs and homers when they play in colorado oh yeah or whatever but. jake billingsley says tim must have an easy week if he's drinking on the job that that's true he, he, he you know listen this guy can get it done any different kinds of ways timbo's also lost 50 pounds so he's a silent killer now let's go bp bag out bailey thank you so fellas let's pick some winners let's pick some winners and let's get right to it baby you know three minutes in let's know lolly dad cody garbrandt plus 245 ohio's own cody garbrandt northern ohio a little bit different but northern ohio cleveland area Versus Devison Figueredo. A Figueredo. Minus 305. The old champ at 125 coming up. Fighting Cody, the former champ at 35. We all know the deal. Cody's got a bit of a chin issue. Um, but he's super fast. He's on a two-fight win streak. Devison Figueredo looked good at 135. Beat up Rod Font. I think Cody's going to have the speed advantage in this fight, even though he's fighting a 125-er. Um, I think his footwork's going to be better. And I think as long as he doesn't get hit and he puts on a master class, we're cashing this underdog ticket, right? Right Hello? off the start. Okay, this is dog. Not a dog lock. I don't do that to the end. But this is a dog pick from your boy, Cody Garbrandt, plus 245. He's also in a little bit of a parlay I'll give you guys later in the show. Uh, I got three parlays to give out tonight. I'm on fucking fire. Christians look lost. Like, oh, what's going on? I don't know how to pick winners. This goofy face bastard. We got it here, Cody Garbrandt. Timbo, I haven't heard from you in a while. What's up, baby? We know how I feel about Cody Garbrandt. Not not as much as I used to, but uh, I don't know, man. I know Figueredo's had troubles with his gas tank, but this being three rounds, um, you know, I think his wrestling defense has held up decently i know moreno took him down and choked him out mm -hmm. i think that's that's cody's only chance to win this fight if he if he goes that wrestling route um definitely like the over as far as rounds are concerned over okay um, i gotta go figure out of here man Figgy. Ah. yeah i gotta take him here I'm, all uh, right fair enough the chalk chalked him up christian uh i already know who you're picking because you have a, a weird thing against Ohio. 
Um, so go ahead and do it. Go ahead and put the sword in my back here, bud. Man, I don't even know if I've ever been to Ohio. It's like, maybe well, like come on, come hasn't. on, Southern Ohio, baby, gorgeous right now. Is that the seven four? The seven four zero? No, that's Trinidad. I believe Trinidad is is from the east part of Ohio, where Joe Burrow is from. About three hours okay. away from me, um, Ohio University. If I'm if I'm not if I'm not uh, mistaken, there, Trin, you can correct me if not. Now I'm from the five one three, baby. Well, let me talk about a worst loser from Ohio. Oh, here not go. Worst. God damn it. That's how you guys say it up there. That's going to be Cody Garbrandt. I can't believe you're picking him. That's just, you should just give me your money because you're wasting it. You're throwing it away. Look, he, if he does brawl, which is his only chance, he's going to get knocked out. That ranged kickboxing thing that he does where he keeps the distance, he's – oh, my gosh. It's so ugly to watch. Like, he – He's not going to win a decision against, especially against somebody like Figueroa that's going to be coming at him. Oh, man, he's so bad. He still is so chinny. He just hasn't fought anybody that can touch it. Figueroa still got the power. He, oh, man, at 135, he's going to have even more. I think he's going to finish this one. Timbo doesn't, but I think this is easy, Figueroa, and then most likely a finish. Okay. Whew, Brian, okay. your pick stinks. Guess what? Guess what? You want to fuck back? You want to put yes. that money up? Whoa. Yeah. Let's go this. I bet you $20 that Cody Garbrandt will knock out Devin Figueredo. You bet $20 Figgy knocks out Cody. If it goes to decision, submission, no bet. Okay. Knockout yeah. wins. Deal? 20 yep. bucks. Yeah. That's the easiest it. $20 I've ever made. Yeah. Let's go, I like baby. That bet. I bet had lack of confidence written all over it. <laughs> Who, me? Oh, yeah. What? I was trying to figure oh, out the right wording. I am confident. Uh, let's see this, Gio. Uh, Central New York, Ohio. Went, went to Ohio University. Been to Ohio University several times. Had sex in the woods up there. Shout out uh, Ohio University. 740 nice. is about 25% of the state. The entire southeast quadrant, if you split into four equal parts, down the middle. Nice. Um, all right, next up, Bobby Green, minus 180 versus Jim fucking Miller. And Bruce Buffer better not pussy out. He better fucking go uh, with Jim fucking Miller. Plus 150. Interesting fight here. We'll go Christian first because he seems like he's on a negative thing here. He's got this dark cloud around him. Cody. What do you got? Cody, sorry. Fucking, uh, I was reading the chat. Christian, who you got? Man, I'm going to have to talk myself into something because I forgot to circle this one on my sheet. Uh, interesting fight. Not the, well, there's two that are maybe not elites, but. Um, I still like it. I think everybody likes both of these fighters. Uh, Jim Miller, you know, we've kind of seen it, especially since he's recovered from, yeah. Plus, uh, um, yeah, it's he's right. Didn't he have Lyme disease? Yeah, he got Lyme disease. I mean, I guess you always have it or something. But right, you don't recover just, from it, right? It's yeah. always on there? I mean, you must recover somewhat because he's looked great. Um, I picked this fight pretty well. I remember going back to the Vince Pichel fight. I was like, this guy will gas after round one. And he had a dominant round one and then gas. And I was like, I just thought that was going to be a money train. And he proved me wrong a couple of times. Then I popped back on recently. He's looked great. Um, he beats the fighters that are worse than him. And he loses the fighters that are better. I guess everybody does that. But it's pretty evident where that line is for Jim Miller. And it sits like right around that top 15. Uh, Bobby Green. Those recent KOs he's taken, uh, that Jalen Turner oof. one was, oof. oof, yeah, oof, ugly. Oof, nobody wants, nobody wants to, see, or ninety nine percent of people don't want to see that. Um, man, it was like four times he got knocked down. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, Bobby Green's right. style, especially in uh, first time of many times, I'll probably bring this up tonight. In like the modern UFC scoring, I think Bobby Green will score pretty well because. Um, he is always putting out offense. I I mean, he well, the, the other time is always shows when he gets hit. But I think he does a good job of winning minutes. Um, maybe a better grappler than Jim, or at least a better wrestler than Jim Miller, but never uses it. Ugh. He's younger, better boxer. I think he'll look better minute to minute. You hear that? That's a 10-second clap or make a pick, dude, you wavering guy. I hate the line, but give me Bobby Green. I think he'll win. All right, Bobby Green. All right, Timbo, what do you got here, babe? What was the line on this? It's Real a minus my 180 plus 150. Jim Miller's the underdog plus 150. Uh, that's what I got yesterday. These lines are moving, by the way. I can go. I can go to DraftKings. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I the same. It. It's the same. Uh, Timbo. Okay. Bobby Green favorite minus 180. I mean, both both of these guys are you know past their prime and, and older. I know Green has had a nice run. Obviously, Jim Miller. I think just has one two in a row. I think like if this was gun to your head, you have to win this fight. I would take fucking uh, Bobby Green, no problem. But he just 
that stupid shit. He drops his right. hands, you know, and he's going to have a reach advantage over Jim Miller. And if he doesn't, then I'd be extremely surprised. I don't know the statistics, but he just looks obviously way longer. Um, yeah, with that said, I think he just pieces Jim Miller up for three rounds, and we see a decision there as well. Um, Jim has excellent subs. I see our guy Isaac says Miller by sub. Mm-hmm. Bobby Green has to fuck up pretty royally in order to get in that position to get subbed by Jim Miller. So if he just plays the distance, boxes him up, you know, may, may land a KO. I doubt it. Jim Miller's been terrible. So I'll, I'll take Green. I like him by decision. Yeah. Um, Justin has one. This is literally my thought process. So Jim Miller won at UFC 100 by decision. KO at UFC 200. Taking Jim by sub at 300 would be just an ultimate way to close out his I mean he's not gonna retire I don't think but to close out his history and I feel like a bag of shit I feel like this is almost MMA sacrilegious picking against Jim Miller on a hundred card right because he's 2-0 so far he's made it this far with all the stuff that he's had had some ugly losses but Bobby Green coming off of his worst knockout of his career I mean he got put out a lot by Jalen Turner not his fault the ref should have jumped in a little bit early and Jalen Turner was an absolute stud but Bobby Green got worked in that fight but before that was winning against some young competition. You know, Jim Miller, unfortunately, hasn't fought the youngest guys. They they favored him lately. He's had some favorable matchups. Bobby Green's fighting the Sharks. Yeah. So I like Bobby Green here. I like Bobby Green probably by decision. I don't think he's getting Jim out of there. We're all on board Bobby Green. Man, I really want to pick Jim Miller here. I just couldn't find it. It's a great plus money number. If you're playing numbers, Jim Miller at plus 150. I mean, fucking all day long. But something tells me that Bobby's going to style on him a little bit. The grappling, I think, is going to be washed out. If Jim wants to wrestle with him, Bobby's take down the fence is okay. His get-up game is really good. His submission defense is pretty good. Jim's obviously got great chokes. Um, Jim's going to want to box this fight. I think I think wrestling tires him out at this point. Why get tired at 300? Let's go out on Let's go out on your shield and banging out with Bobby Green. And I think when Bobby Green's locked in, he's a slick boxer. And uh, he can get it done. The only thing that concerns me is Bobby loses a lot of fucking uh, decisions because he's showboat. Nah, that didn't hurt. Nah, nah, we're good. And then he's doing a lot of the movement. And the judges are like, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, that's my only take is how he loses a lot of these decisions. The decision is a good bet for this fight. Yeah. That's that's very crazy that they have the same reach. So same I guess, reach. I agree with you. I Green never looks like he has long arm. Yeah. And, and, you know, Jim Miller kind of crunches up when he fights where, like, Green's all you know loose and shit, so it's just the optics, maybe. But I, that's very surprising. Very interesting, and I, for the listeners, the watchers, all three sharp minds here, you know, on Bobby Green. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Like, I'm all not three of us you, were like, eh, like uh, I, we because yeah. we didn't want to hit against Tim Miller, but I, I'm pretty yeah, confident in the in. pick. I'm not going to tell you Kenny's pick because it's not out yet, but um, yeah. So next up, Jessica Andrade minus 125 versus Mahina Hadi. Yes, Mahina plus 105. This fight to me, I'm going to get this done quick. This screen's power versus speed. Marina Arriaga's got knocked out by Amanda Lemos. One punch, timing's there. Andrade, this girl needs to take some time off. She won't. She goes, oh, I'll fight whoever, whenever, what the case. She might be just hoarding money and building just giant houses in Brazil because this girl is fighting, getting paid, fighting, getting paid, getting put out, coming back, looking good, rinse and repeat. Rodriguez is fast. She does have power. She has accuracy, but I don't think it's the power of Andrade. I think Andrade can sleep her. I think Andrade, if she uses that wrestling, remember she dumped Rose Namajunas on her fucking head. Let's bring that. Let's bring that back, right? Because Marina Rodriguez is not very good off her back. She gets dominated on the ground when she's on her back, and Jessica Andrade can do that. She hasn't really done that because. I think she gets maybe a little tired or whatever. But I think this is the right weight class for. Her. I think she's gonna come out of. I think she's going to come out aggressive, and then she's going to be so much stronger than Rodriguez, who's already pretty thin and tall for the weight, uh, weight class. I like um, Andrade here. I like her maybe by decision, but I think I've written down – I do have written down here KO as well because, you know, Rodriguez got hit by Mena Lemos and did not like getting hit. Did not like getting hit. She was running scared. Um, so if Andrade puts hands on her and lands, it's going to be a fucking problem. I like Jessica Andrade here. Uh, not sure how I'm going to play it. Let's go. It's UFC throwing it on her, baby. Enough, enough of this decision shit. By KO. I see someone in the chat saying, uh, Derek Green says Andre by sub is in play. That's probably a gorgeous fucking number. Um, but give me Jessica Andrade. Timbo, who do you like in this chick fight? I fucking love Jessica Andrade. Always have, always will. I think she's just fucking badass. Goes in there mm-hmm. with her, you know, kind of recklessly, but um, just her power, man. She fucking mm-hmm. cracks. Um, you know, you had mentioned her not utilizing her wrestling. She just had fucking horrible matchups for that. 
You look mm-hmm. at Aaron Blanchfield, even Mackenzie Dern in her last fight, like she wasn't going to go to the ground that chick. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think Andrade is a slight favorite here. Yep. Like 120. Something yep, like that. Slight favorite. Yep. Yeah. I have her at 125. Lions might have moved a little bit. Yeah. She is uh, minus 135 now. So. Okay. And Trent put in by sub plus 600. Who? That, that's a fun bet. But I mean, just the money line, the values there for sure. Andrade. I, I'm rocking with her heavy this weekend. Timbo's on draw on drives. Christian, you gonna ruin this party and go me hey, he how do you? Oh hell no. Jessica, John, hands of stone, Lineker, Bate Astaka, Andrade, one of my favorite fighters of all time. Hell of a name. Hell yeah. Hell of a name there, Just, CC. Love love the best nickname in the game. Yeah, love the way she fights, obviously. Um Brian, you had said, yeah, she's just, it comes down to power. It's got, it's in my notes. She's more powerful, a great finisher. Rodriguez is not a great finisher. Um, when it comes to just pure, like total grappling ability, Andrade is just, just, I mean, better in every possible way. I mean, she does have finishes over, over, you know, good fighters. Um, I just see, yeah. I mean, other than Marina's size and there's like a technical striking ability, I think she's worse everywhere else. Um, I think there's tons of value on the line. I, I just don't see how Rodriguez wins. I, it, I mean, I can see Andrade fin- finishing, winning an easy decision. Uh, I don't think it'll be close. So yeah, give me uh, Jessica John hands of Stone Liner, Lina Carbate, a stock Andrade. There he goes. <laughs> Look at him just saying it. Just you know, he, you know what he's trying to do here, people. Subtly, he's trying to show me up because I can't pronounce stuff. I can't pronounce anything, and he's over here just fucking rattling us off like it's no big deal. Whatever, Kristen. All right, next up, Jalen Turner, minus 245 versus Money Mocano. He wants money. Renato Mocano, plus 200. This line throws me off because Mocano is the hotter fighter right now with a lot of victories and whatnot. He's a grappler. Jalen Turner has struggled with grapplers. But you look at the Drew Dober fight. He got hurt on the feet a few times, and Drew Dober just did not have good takedown offense. And when Mocano took him down, he didn't do much. Jalen Turner is kind of a dog on the ground, too. He's got a really good front choke. He's got some long legs. Moicano has the better jiu-jitsu, don't get me wrong, but there is a path of victory if he gets sloppy. You know, mocano has been choked out before. Jalen Turner can choke him out. Now, let's not even compare him on the feet, right? Mocano is a 45er going up to 55. Jalen Turner is fucking massive, right? So unless he has a bad weight cut, I'm pretty confident in Jalen Turner in this spot here. Um, almost was a slime ball piece for me, not... I love the double chance here, KO or sub by Jalen Turner. I think it's going to be a finish. I think it's going to be a wrap. Um, I like Money Mocano. I like what he's doing. I like his, like, you know, whatever. But this should have been Patty Pimlin in there. This is this shouldn't have been a Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner's a dog. Kind of came together last minute, so I'm going to be paying attention to the scales because on Instagram, Jalen Turner looks like a fucking monster, and I don't know how he makes 155. Um, but I like Jalen Turner. I like him by double chance, KO or sub. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think he's, I think he's, he's primed to win here. CC, who do you got, Bob? Yeah. Jalen Turner just made 155 for like two weeks notice, whatever that last fight was. Yeah. So, um, you, I, it doesn't look like he should be able to make it. I think it might've been a pay-per-view. Cause I remember us talking, I think like the, uh, we made odds on him not making weight, but, um, yeah, this is kind of a mismatch. I think in my eyes, um, my is so hittable and he gets wobbled when he gets hit. Yeah. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like he's just getting tapped and he's take and he's the people that are hitting him are hitting him hard. Uh, you know, Dober was getting after him pretty good. That RDA fight was brutal. Um, uh, just, yeah, like I said, a mismatch size wise, I think a mismatch it's, you know, obviously if my gets the back, he could do something with it, but I think Turner's grappling is really good. His jujitsu is good. I, I don't see it happening. Um, it's not surprising. It's minus two forty five favorite. Saying I like him a lot and it's a mismatch is uh, not some sort of uh, divine prophecy. Yeah, mcconnell has got no knockouts ever, so he really truly doesn't have knockout power. So mm-hmm. I don't know what Taylor Turner's going to have to worry about. He just has to keep the distance, and mm-hmm. if he does, if he were to get taken down, just stand up, which I think he can do. So and that's a good point. But, he's, yeah. so, he's so much longer too, so he's going to carry his hands a little lower because Mukano does. I mean, Mukano has hands, but he's never knocked anybody out. So Turner's going to kind of look like Bobby Green in there. Keep it low. Keep a low base. Pick him apart. Try to avoid that takedown. Uh, that's a good good analysis by Christian there. Compliment number one. If we have the compliment counter, I just complimented yeah. Christian once. He hasn't complimented, he hasn't complimented me at all. Um, Christian, so you're going with Jalen Turner, right? Correct. I cut yep. you off. I apologize. No, uh, that's all right. I was done. I, I really appreciated that. Okay. Like yeah, that was, that was good break, analysis. I like that. And then we got uh, Timbo. Who we got here, babe? 
Yeah, I'm thinking Jalen Turner as well. But, um, I mean, people forget, like, one, I picked Zach uh, Dan Hooker against Jalen Turner mm-hmm. a year ago, and I was criticized heavily by you two. And don't remember team. that. Don't, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I'll, find, I'll, find, I'll find the comments from the chat. Man, are you crazy? Listen, uh, <laughs> that never happened, and I never said the leech was a top five fighter or whatever. <laughs> that those, those never happened yet. Both those things never happened. I had mentioned Damon Jackson during last week's card. I said there's only room for one leech, and I know Brian's ass clenched up. And said, oh. I, I read that very – I literally looked at it and said – how am I going to respond to this? Oh, I know. Not respond to it. <laughs> I had uh, nothing to say. Yeah, I mean, Turner, uh, just a problem, man. 28 in his prime, huge, you know, decent on the feet. I'm not going to, you know, Hooker showed showed him that there's, you know, there, there's tears to the, the strike game. But obviously his grappling is phenomenal. Uh, Moy Kano is getting up there. He's 34 years old now. Um well, it kind of is tough, though, man. Like, CC, you mentioned that RDA fight. I mean, he took a fucking ass with him for five rounds. Took 150 significant strikes. I, I like maybe a decision for Jalen Turner here. I think that might have some good money on it. Uh, maybe plus money, hopefully. But, yeah, long story short, going with Jalen Turner, pretty confident about that. That'll definitely be a parlay piece. Yeah, I, I think that's a good parlay piece, too. He's not, like, a crazy number. Um, I mean, he's a little high. This card is pretty pretty evened out with the odds i think i mean there's a couple like kayla harrison bo nickel and, and uh, you know way lee are pretty high but other than that it's it's pretty kind of even tough fight to read across the board all right so that was the early pre prelims we just got done with which is crazy let's it's go to so dumb that they even do that because it's like always on this it's like there's no gap yeah, you don't have to change it well i think you do in canada maybe i don't know it doesn't uh, matter but hey we look, have guys, i heard uh someone made this comment on the podcast i can't remember who but would you have preferred that they split this card into two nights, then like a Saturday and Sunday? Kind of like WrestleMania did? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I wish mean, because I'm not going to be able to watch on Saturday. But Yeah, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind that. They would have to add more fights, I think. I wouldn't mind that, but uh, it, it would build more and you would get more viewers. I mean, that's why WrestleMania does it. But, yeah, I mean, no, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little selfish, too. I kind of want it all in one night as well. I don't know, but I wouldn't be opposed to it, I don't think. Yeah, I get the Sunday and then having to wake up on Monday. I think that for a lot of people would be shitty. That's true. I'd, I do. I'd rather Mondays Friday. Are my worst day at work, so that would, I'd that much would rather be. Friday Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, good. if I they mean, did a Friday and Saturday, yeah, because WrestleMania did it Sunday. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be tough because, like I said, Fridays are or so me, the Mondays rights. are pretty tough at work. Um, real quick, what do you think the canvas color is going to be? I've been I've been a fat uh, obsessing over this for some reason. They released new shorts for all the fighters. Max got the floor, which is dope. Uh, Pereira's got some dope ones. Zhang Wali, Justin Gaethje. Um, what do you think the mat color is going to be? UFC 100 is regular. 200, it was like yellow, which I think John told me that they were upset. It was supposed to be more gold. You think we're getting a different color mat or what? Just a giant monster can the entire no, thing. No, no, it's going to be prime, bro. <laughs> oh, prime. About, I, I'll tell you this. The, the Anakin Florian's not out yet. I, I had my wife drive to three different places while she was on her way to work. Prime made a ufc 300 flavor it's a oh, bottle shit. yeah and i have it let me let me go get it you guys you guys talk to watch this out. yeah so that, that fucking dan hooker pick i'm just gonna pat myself on the back from a pick about a year ago but yeah dan hooker beating the shit out of jalen turner and then i think it was a split which is bullshit but man so for the past couple weeks i've been fucking on fire with the free limbs and then as we I get lo- the second to last fight in the last fight that's my like live, live betting podcast. has been Literally. nonstop. So UFC oh, no, 300 oh. Prime. So this is probably, if anything, this will be ready on the, in the in the middle of the cage. I don't love Prime. My kids love it. It's got coconut water in it. So anyway, I've never I had bought. It. I had my wife go to every fucking shop that said they had it. The vitamin shop had it. She bought me two. On the Anakin Florian, I did a bit where I'm like, "Hey, Kenny, I'm on steroids. I'm drinking 300 Prime or whatever." So this tasted like piss. <laughs> I mean. Piss with a hint of lemonade, right? No, it was cold. I, I put him in the... Yeah, it was cold. It was so bad, dude. Like, I'm a Gatorade guy, right? I like I like my Gatorade. This Would was you rather bad. drink that or this? That. I'd rather slam an IPA, dude. Right. This was Corona, so bad. Corona, Corona, you put a lime in Corona, and I'm, I'm dancing, you know. This what was bad. Sorry. 
We're not going to get a sponsorship by Prime, boys. I'm sorry, but this is bad. So anyway. Is that a flavor? Is there like, is it like orange or dude, something? Dude, there's no flavor on it. It's just UFC 300 Prime. It says no flavor on it. I think the flavor might be a little bit of a lemonade okay. mixed with piss, mixed with sweat, mixed with blood, a little bit of Dana White's greasy bald flop. I don't know, dude. It's not good. All right, here we go. Sorry for that disruption. Probably should edit that out. I'm not a professional. Fuck it. Let's go. Diego Lopez, minus 142 versus Sadiq Yusuf, plus 120. I fucking love this fight. This could low-key be fight of the night. Both these guys come after it. Sadiq, a good striker. He's improving everywhere. Diego Lopez on fire right now. Looks like my guy, Patrick Swayze. He's got the dope-ass hair. Everyone loves this dude, and he's a fucking a non-stop action-packed fighter. I have a strong lean on this fight. I love it so much that I'm probably going to mortal lock it up if I get the chance. I'm going to hear from Timbo first, though. Timbo, let's go. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is over two and a half plus 124. Fucking love okay. that. Okay. Uh, definitely love that. Yeah, I mean, this is standard, you know, vet, proven vet against newcomer. Um It'll be a huge one for Diego. Really won't that be, be that big for Sadiq Yusuf. Um, you, you know, Yusuf let me down, and I was rooting for Barbosa. I love Barbosa, but, I mean, he let me right. down in that fight. He, he showed, I think, maybe his gas tank, his fight IQ. There was a lot of lot of issues there. Um, but I, I'm going with Sadiq here, honestly, Ooh. just being the more proven guy. Um, definitely Diego. Diego's toughest test. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say this is Sadiq Yusuf's toughest test. Right. Uh, so, yeah, my my bet will be over two and a half for plus money. But give me Sadiq here. I think uh, maybe a late finish, maybe late second, you know, third round finish. But, yeah, I like Sadiq. Interesting. Christian, what do you got, Bob? Yeah, Timbo, I'm with you on this one. I really like Sadiq's experience. That was really, the, I think, the main thing that drew me to him. I've been on Lopez these last couple of fights, so I've won money on him. I definitely see what I don't think, like what people were missing at first, but I think also they're overestimating it. Um, you know, these wins were very early. We didn't see a lot. I mean, we saw the Avloya fight, and I think people take a lot from it being surprising, um, kind of like when Benoit St. Denis survived against uh, um, Easy Dos Santos. We, I, but I, that turned out to be pretty, uh, it turned out to be pretty true. That guy actually was tough as fuck. Um, yeah, Lopez has got some hands. He's got subs. Um, I, but so does Sadiq Youssef and Sadiq Youssef has proven that he gets a much higher level of fighter. He's made a lot of mistakes in his losses. Um, and you know, I'm not sure how good his fight IQ is, but I've just seen him do it. And I think he can do it against, you know, it's, it's a guy the same age as him who hasn't fought as tough a competition, just not proven. And I think the Longer this fight goes, it'll definitely favor Sadiq more with that experience. And I do think this one's going to go longer, and that's when uh, Lopez will be out of his element. So, yeah, I think it's the worst fight on the card, and I don't think it's – I think it's a good really? fight. Yes, I do think wow. it's uh, – so, I was – Yeah, yeah why, worst fight, I, but I was, still a damn good fight. I, I was surprised you liked it so much because, yeah, it's, and I don't even mean this as like a diss, but I do think it is the worst fight. <laughs> um, well, it's not a diss when it's on this card. That the yeah. this card's so good. Oh, it's it's a good fight. I would never yeah. like I, I would never miss this. I would it it could co probably co main like a any sure. generic fight. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with that. Um, I love when I've seen him in the chat. A lot of people are avoiding this fight. Justin not touching this fight. Trin not betting this fight. You guys are like, I'm gonna take Sadiq plus money. He's got the experience. I'm all in on Diego Lopez. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. all in. Sadiq has been hurt in every single one of his fights. Got a little bit of chin issue. Never been put out. He's been put down. You get put down by Diego Lopez early. He jumps on you like a dog on the bone. He's so aggressive with his submissions. I like Diego by finish here. KO or sub. Not sure I'm going to play it. And slime no. ball. No. Slime ball leg one, baby. No one likes it. Which makes me love it. This is what makes me a really either good or bad gambler. I'm going to be wow. celebrating in the chat come Saturday and on Twitter. Or I'm going to be hanging my head like, ah, oh, you know better. You took the blah, blah, blah. I got the your crazy BP. Oh, I love dude. this shit. This was a lightning bolt fucking boom. It, tell, tell me more. Tell I tell me, everybody like, tell this all the more. time. I print the sheet off, right? And I have no lines. 
I print the sheet off. I go up and down. And before I get the lines, I mark who I'm going to win, who I think is going to win no matter what. So obviously I'm going to go Bo Nickel because Bo's my guy. But then I get to Diego Lopez against Sadiq and I like Sadiq a lot. And I go, I think fucking Diego runs through him. I think he's too, I think he's too good everywhere. I think he can submit Sadiq. I think he can catch Sadiq. And I was like, what am I thinking? So I go back and I do some tape study and I find the line. I'm like, holy shit. I thought Diego Lopez might've been slight plus money when before i looked at the line he's obviously the hotter fighter right now winning and stuff but man lightning bolt strike slime leg one diego lopez i got three parlays for you only one green hammer though the slime is bakery brother slimed him up baby the slime is plus 371 too i wanted it over 300 for UFC 300. So okay, well, that's good. So that means the other two legs should give me like at least plus 170. So I'll hey, well, why don't you take this leg, my guy? Because we're winning. Oh, no. Ah, I love that. I love. I'm so glad you guys went first. The chat hates me, but I fucking love it. Look at this one. Got to be confident making picks. That's why I love you. That's true. You got to be confident. I love the first leg. I love you, Crone. He's on board. Trent, what do you got? The fight deadline yeah. and Apex bet. It's probably the worst on the card. It's so fucking ridiculously good. Yeah, yeah it is. I, a, yeah. We got my guy Kieran here. What's up with the what's up, babe? Uh, watching the sub team fight again due to so advanced. Technically, he has so many answers. It's true. I think the fight in Cody fight, the only fights I don't have bets in. I know who I'm rooting for in each fight, but don't want to risk money. Thank you, Bradley. And 430 stack. Yeah, that's true. You're a West Coast guy. My bad, dude. All the West Coast people out there, I'm sorry we started early, but, you know, you, you know, tr- cr- Christian's out there. What do you, You're in the mountain, right? The mountain time zone? The mountain, yeah. Okay, you're a mountain. It's, okay. yeah, it's the best time zone. Best. It's, you know, I, I think Central is probably the best, but... Um, I think West is the worst. When it's one thirty in the morning and you guys are watching an Apex card. No, no, me. I I agree oh. with you. I think I think Eastern is is not great. I think the West isn't great. I would go. I would rank time zones. I'd rank Central, Mountain, Eastern, Western. That's my ranking of time zones. You, wait, oh, oh Central by, East is by far the worst. <laughs> Central, Mountain, Eastern, Western. Is my is my take. Let's see what the chat has to say. I'm curious about this one. I yeah, because I think in, 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 in that is true. In. Arizona does have its own time zone. I forgot about that. They don't do the, the, oh, yeah, the daily savings. Good. Hey yo, sixty plus weeks. So, yeah, here we go. Hit that for the algorithm. That's right, baby. We got sixty one people watching here. Nailed a BP. Thank you, Derek Green. I think Central, which is an hour behind Eastern's good. There's guys in Canada, by the way, who are an hour ahead of Eastern. Which I didn't yeah, even realize New, was a thing. New Finland time. Yeah, right. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Um, yeah, so let's move on here. We got Kayla Harrison, Cincinnati own. Let's see what she feels about the Eastern time zone. Hey, boys, Middletown, 45 minutes away from Cincinnati, but um, we'll claim her. Um, minus 455 favorite versus Holly Holm, plus 350. I want to say something real quick. Chris Curtis, my guy, fought valiantly last week. Um, he tweeted out, Kayla Harrison looks older than Holly Holm. What's happening? First and foremost, that may or may not be true, but I am pulling up the Kayla Harrison every day of the week compared to Holly Holm. Every day of the week. You see how long Holly Holm's hair is? There's no way she can wash all that dirty <laughs> butt. I like Kayla Harrison, baby. She looks Jack. She looks great. I also like her in this fight. Um, I think she's going to win probably by decision or sub. Going Kayla Harrison. I'm not going to go huge on it. UFC debut, jitters. I think she is a little limited at times. Holly Holm, the way she used to fight, I think would give Kayla Harrison problems. Now she's clinching. Now she's cage working. Give her give her some distance. Throw those kicks. Throw those hands. We're not seeing a lot of that anymore. Uh, I think Kayla smothers her, I think, against the cage. I don't think this fight's going to be all that exciting. Um, I am curious to see how. I think Kayla will hit 135. I'm curious to see how she fights after making that weight because there's some pictures today i saw after her little uh media scrum and she looks absolutely yoked i mean she's leaned out for sure but she looks fucking yoked um so i'm going kayla harrison christian what do you like in this fight you taking holly home there's some value on home i think I, i'm i know if i'm overlooking it but there's some value on home maybe there might be um real quick shout out to bradley for uh bradley from kentucky for uh agreeing with me on the mountain time zone being the best and I am, I, you know, as we discussed, I was born on the East Coast, so I, For like I am three not biased. Months. Get out of here! <laughs> uh, yeah, shout out to my uh, my home state, UConn, and their 
most recent championship. Okay, there so back to Want me back to money. this. Uh, this fight is interesting just because you know we've always wondered what Kayla Harrison would look like in the UFC, and now we're gonna find. Well, we might find out um, if she makes weight, of course. So yeah, Holly Holmes, a uh, boring old cage pusher with a head kick knockout about mm-hmm. ten years ago. Um, Kayla Harrison, pretty much the same thing, just a little bit younger and a little bit bigger. Uh, I think the most curious dynamic in this fight, though, uh, is that Kayla Harrison can elbow now. And it's something she's never been able to do before. Um, That's big Ronnie Pellegrino right there, part of the MMA. Ta- or, oh, I, me, John, I heard him on the uh, Kenny heard- Florian podcast. He builds the parlays. That guy's a sharp. Everyone give Big Ron Betts a follow. He's, he's, oh, he's yeah. a dope dude. Really generous, uh, dope, good, just solid human being all right go ahead christian sorry yeah you can take us to his cantina or whatever it is uh why well, i, I next, want, next time we're literally in vegas. when i was in vegas i'm dming ron like dude i want to come i'm literally i can't stop shitting i felt so bad i couldn't go to his place um but go ahead <laughs> um so yeah yeah the two boring cage pushers but yeah i think uh i'm really curious to see kayla harrison with elbows i think that's such a limiting factor in the pfl mm-hmm. for somebody that lives and dies by ground and pound and chokes um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see her bust those things out and get a and finish Holly home. And if it turns into some sort of, I don't know, like a arm triangle or something from her covering up, so be it. But yeah, I, I think Kayla Harrison could finish it. Um, I'm, I'm fine parlaying minus four fifties. I just don't see a way that Holly wins it. She's, I don't know. She, her style is bad. She, she doesn't box anymore and she's going to be so much smaller. So yeah. Um, yeah, Timbo, you tell me why. Tell me, tell me, Tim, Timbo. I can't do the dog play here as much as I oh. want to. Cece, you would mention, you know, Harrison's, you know, a little younger, dude. She's 10 years younger than Holly Holm. Holly Holm is now 42 years old. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Um, someone said she had an underrated ass. Correction, she well, used to. She used to. I, I think her ass is great. I just... I mean, Kayla Harrison, I know people get thrown off by those muscles, but I mean, take a look at her backside every once in a while, boys. I, mean, we're talking, I, we're talking. I agree with Chris where Holly Holm, because I saw something with Kayla where she was, it was some interview and she wasn't wearing much makeup. I was like, yeah. oof, that's not what she looks like when she's at the fights going. Who, who's this, Kayla or? Yeah, yeah, Kayla? Holly, yeah. Well, I, Kayla, yeah, Kayla looks old. We're going to get in trouble for this talk. We're all sexist as shit, but Kayla, I don't think, you know, well, well, she has... What? She has an older looking face, I think, for 32 or yeah. whatever. But uh, I still, so any day of the week, her over Holly Holm for me. That's just my, that's just my opinion. It it we'll Tatum objectify Temple, a couple Yalda of guys Holmes later. Really so it dog, count. Though. Tatum Temple, you probably the only female in the chat as we're talking about females. <laughs> she thinks, uh, extra love, pal. I'm sitting here in Vegas, penthouse with a good Annex and happy 300 fight week. Shout out the Anna Twins, another impossibly cool friends <sighs> of the show, uh, Jason and John. All right. So. Uh, we're all on the same board as Kayla Harrison. I think decision. You boys think finish? Sub. Sub? Yeah. Christian? Yeah. I, Sub? I'm gonna, yeah, I, I think she'll I think she'll elbow and it'll lead into arm triangle. Arm bar. Arm bar. So, yeah, her arm bar's dope. Right there, I know that some, like the Fandle used to do it with the main event. They would do you where could you pick, pick what you won by? Yeah. I, I haven't seen that in a while, bud, if, if that's still I, I a thing, because that'd be dope. I won it on when Izzy knocked out Alex Pajara. I won it yeah. Izzy by by punches, and it was oh. Barstool. Ha- Barstool had it for like a couple of weeks. I remember. Maybe but that- Barstool's now ESPN Bet, so maybe ESPN yeah. Bet has it. Love um, Kayla Harrison. Two seventy five by submission for Kayla Harrison on DraftKings. I think that's a really good value play right there. Um, yeah, maybe I somebody just, in the chat knows if they have. She it. has a dope oh. arm bar, Kayla oh, Harrison. MGM. Are, huh? Justin said oh. that. Bet oh, MGM. Justin, bet MGM has those bets. Nice. Thank you, Justin. Uh, she has a dope armor. Females are very flexible. Sometimes arm bars, you know, Ronda Rousey had it perfected. And I think, obviously, uh, Kayla, coming from judo, too, has a sick arm bar. But, man, uh, women's arm bars are so flexible. Like, if you get me an arm bar, if you get me here, I'm tapping. I'm made of stone. I have no flexibility in my shoulders. <laughs> Christian, how much do you weigh right now, Christian? Uh, I'm down to, like, 172-ish. Okay, so yeah. you and... You and fucking Chris, or excuse me, Timbo are in about the same weight class. Timbo's 185 right now. At 6'3", tall drink of water, you guys got to fight at like 175, 170. You know, you've been, doing, water, the, you've been doing the MMA classes, <laughs> bud. Now. Hold up now. Christian's been training. Chris has been training yeah. but Timbo. I got, I got a few more subs. I got a few hey, subs on the record. Though. I've seen the triangle by Timbo. 
Two fifty by sub for Harrison. Thank you, John Jay. And then I got Kayla round three or by decision minus one or three. Uh, I've been MMA caught in many box- triangles. And the so takes boxing not, uh... tournament would be would be fun. We'd have to find something. If, I'm too big for you guys. Like Timbo is like I'm my height inch taller than me, but I'm just I'm just a thick fucking dude. So I don't know. Timbo's a six three welterweight. Yeah, he is. He's a tall guy. Yeah. Right next up, just, Timbo Woodson. K- Calvin Cade plus one thirty versus Aljamain Sterling minus one fifty five. Aljo at 145. I don't know how I feel about it. I've been flip-flopping on this fucking all week. Let me go first because this is my green hammer, okay? Let me pull out the big dog, right? Let me pull out the big boy, okay? I need to start smashing some shit with this. I've hit myself in the head with it several times. And I really appreciate you guys not talking about the giant pit bull on my face because my (laughs) wife... My wife has done so much work to get this ready, and, and the final stage was, do you want makeup? And I said, I can't. I can't do the makeup. I'll fucking rock, uh, rock the pimple. Anyway, back to this. I'm picking Aljo. I think Aljo wins. Sub would be great, but I think it's going to be a decision, right? Calvin Cater coming off a knee injury. I'm worried how long or how much grappling training he's actually doing. Coming off a knee injury at 36 is tough enough, let alone going, I got to fight this scrappy grappler. You know, it's tough, right? So the green hammer is Calvin Cater. And this is a bet I've already placed. 1.7 units. So $170 from your boy. Uh, Calvin Cater minus, or excuse me, plus three and a half minus 170. I think he'll steal around in there for sure. He'll make it tough on, on Aljo. I don't think Aljo's cleaning up at 30-27. Cater can even win. Plus three and a half point spread at minus 170. That's the fucking green hammer, baby. It's not the juiciest, but God damn it, we need winners at this point, baby. There it is right there. There, Look at this, dude. I fucking, this needs to be my profile picture right here. Just cover my I'm face. Get four arms, Just I'm fucking, looking at the four arm definition. This fucking joke, yeah. man. All right, so that's it. Tiger looked like it was about to jump off your arm. What was that? The tiger? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, what do you boys have in this fight? Let's go, Timbo. Uh, Cater or Sterling? Remember, I picked Sterling, but I think Cater's going to win around. Yeah, I um, I didn't know Calvin Cater was thirty six. God damn. Yep. The one forty five off an ACL. The lower the weight, that age doesn't that age doesn't translate well. Um, but I, I'm definitely going Aljo here. You know, I think we shouldn't have any problems getting this to the ground. Cater's a striker, decent grappling, I guess, but Aljo's world class. So I'm up, arguably best bantamweight champion of all time. Um, I don't know how he gets it done. What, what, I got it up here. So Aljo, oh, minus 175, dude. That's fucking beautiful. That, that's, that's the green hammer play right there. Take What's out that? Aljo, just money line. Take out um, Diego Lopez, put in Aljo. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not super confident in Aljo. I know Aljo's like kind of my guy with Ray Longo, but I don't know what he's going to look like at 145. I saw a picture of him. He looks great. He looks thick. He looks like a big dude, but I don't think his takedowns are world class. I think he's really good at jumping to your back and getting you there. And Cater's got a 91% takedown offense. The only guy that took him down was Zabit off like a flying knee. So, uh, but he's never fought a guy like Aljo. So there's a lot of moving parts to this fight. This is a stiff, stiff test. For Aljo at 145. Christian, what do you think about this? Uh, Timbo's confident. I love when Timbo's confident. Timbo's confident in Aljo. I, I maybe will. I'm not going to switch up the slime ball, but maybe I'll look closer at Aljo at that money line come fight night. Yeah, well, I think you kind of said all. Oh, you think Aljo's going to win and Cater will take a round. I, it's, I mean, I, I guess I could see. <laughs> With the judges, for sure. With the way these fucking judges have been fucking me. Yeah, for sure. That could happen. <laughs> <laughs> but this the whole yeah. the chat's killing me right here. Justin's like, I'm it's 30, I'm, I'm I, turning I don't 36 this year, and Tim acting like that's death's door. And then Lazy Bed said, When I turned 36, my dick <laughs> fell off. Careful, Justin. That is that is just so yeah, good. good. Alex is 34. He's not a fucking spring chicken. No, he's the, and he's coming and, and he has a neck problem too, which again. These injuries, man, when you when you're I mean, that's how guys get hurt is the training. This fucking training. I saw uh Marab going with like a Dagestan, like Sambo champion. I don't know who he was. I don't think he fights, but he's just a pure wrestler. And he fucking put he fucking spiked Marab on his head in training. Like that's how you get these injuries. Um, but uh, anyway, sorry, I'm gonna yield that and go to Christian. Christian, tell me how this wins, bud. Or who wins? Um, yeah, so <sighs> 
I'll, I guess I'll kind of get straight to my pick. I'll, I think Aljo will win. Um, okay. Why I think he'll win? Because he always gets to the back. I saw that somebody in the chat, I think it was Trent, said, you know, he's missed on 60 straight takedowns. But his takedowns are different than – he doesn't do some huge shot across the cage and then, like, give himself – he's going to try and then try again and keep trying. And he'll keep – whether it's, you know – Uh-oh against the cage he'll, it, he'll keep go. trying to get you down i don't think he couldn't care less if he gets you down on the first try or not does it because once he gets you there i mean he's you see what happens when he gets anybody's back i mean whether it's the people the skill of sanhagen and yawn and look i know cater there's like oh cater is he can stop takedowns you know he can grapple he can't grapple like those guys can not even not even anywhere close to what those guys did so you know if he gets the back i wouldn't be shocked to see him finish um i wouldn't bet it though um weirdly enough when i was thinking about this I thought about it was like this reminds me of the Curtis Brendan Allen, just the the way both of these guys fight, except for the black guy's the white guy and the white guy's the black guy. You've got, mm -hmm. um, you know, you've just got this boxer versus a guy that needs to get your back, a guy that finishes by rear naked choke. And, you know, with our shitty judges and the way they are, no. what are they going to reward? Did that uh, last week? They're like, all right, well, you got the back. You never got even close to a neck, but you still won the rounds like that. So, you they know, I guess the shit recently, though. They've been doing good exactly. With that. Judges it's have been so doing hard with that. Yeah, it's so Allen. hard. Like it's so hard to predict. To predict who like yeah. are you going to reward like this back? Are you going to reward the Aljo back control? Or are you not? Yeah. Um, so the more you, I talk, the more I talk about it, I'm like, dang, that three point five bet on Cater is so good. So good because I, at it's least mine. don't it, take it. It's mine. Uh, I, well, I'm going to tail it. I think that <laughs> Brian, you're so smart, and that's such a great bet. I wish I would have thought of it. That's more. That, that, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. All right. That's the yeah. that's the brain of a champion better right there. There he is. Um, but yeah, there give me is. Aljo for the fight. Give me Aljo money line. I like that as well. Um, I think we're kind of all on the same page with that. Yeah, it's it's a tough fight to pick, though. I mean, seriously, like if Aljo if he's entering round three without a takedown, he's probably gonna need a finish. I don't see him out striking Cater. Cater's got power, he's got good boxing, his kicks are coming a long way. Aljo's funky. He throws you off rhythm. He's very funky, but he's still not going to win a decision by just striking, in my opinion. He has to grapple. And uh, Aljo, you know, he says, when I get your back, it's a rap rap or whatever, you know, whatever he says. Um, he's very good on the back. And I think that's the play here. He goes for a single, maybe hips out and jumps to the back, you know, because Cater's very tough to take down. And Cater's big. Cater's big 45-er. Um, so I'll be interested to in see uh, how Aljo does in that fight. I'm very curious about that fight. All right, next up, this fight's got a little heat on it. Little little shit talking. Uh, Yuri Prohaska plus one hundred five versus Alexander Rockich minus one twenty five. Um, Rockich says um, Yuri's not a samurai. Just because you read a book doesn't mean you're a samurai. I think that was a direct quote from Media Day. And Yuri says, this guy doesn't know who I am. He's going to find out, come the cage. And then he said something like, if I had a problem with him, I'd go knock on his door. I don't know. Some some real Eastern European bad blood between these boys. Um, interesting fight. These guys probably should have been fight, have already fought, but Rockage blew his knee out. I'll go Christian. What do you like in this 205 contest? Winner possibly gets title shot at 205, really depending on how the main event goes. But winner could get a title shot. So how do you see this fight going? Um, man, Yuri is, uh, not a friend of the podcast. I wish he was on Cheers journey at 300 since fighting Glover. It just seems, uh, sorry, I guess for the audio people, I was just reading a comment, but, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why, yeah. yeah, that's why Yuri I'm not a pro he, podcaster. Yuri said he talks too much shit, you know, Yuri's um, crazy. So yeah, Yuri's wild. I saw that thing. Uh, I don't get, you know, I don't do a whole lot of social media, but I like to check out steamroller stuff. And I saw like the thing he posted with uh, Yuri and like, he's like, I tried to touch his swords. He's politely said no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He touched it was pretty sword, funny, bro. Um, so yeah, they, I mean, I, I love Yuri. I just love exciting fighters like that. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the reason I love Gaethje, the reason I love like Nate, the train, I just love fighters that fight like that. The problem is sometimes when they get matched up with a boring ass, like, take down control type fighters mm -hmm. who can do enough to keep it there. And I'm worried that's the type of matchup we have. Um, mm -hmm. Rogish hasn't always been that, that boring takedown guy, but I, that Anthony Smith fight is stuck in my head. Like, you know, yeah. some fights never leave you. And that's all I can picture him as a fighter. Um, he does have good leg kicks and Yuri's leg was like a piece of beef after like that mm -hmm. first two minutes versus just like Rocky hitting the beef. The thing was just raw after a mm -hmm. couple of minutes against, uh, Alex Pereira. Um, Yuri gets knocked out in every single fight. 
or flash KO'd in every single fight. Even if he no. wins, he still gets knocked out. Yeah, that yeah, Reyes sure. one, when his head he doesn't remember, like, He doesn't even remember the Reyes wins. He goes, yeah, I got knocked <laughs> out. I don't fucking remember a thing. Yeah, and he That's just got nut. woken back up by the next punch. Crazy yeah. that Reyes was that close to like <laughs> just another run. And it's just oh, no. this been the craziest downfall. Um, He's also, you know, Yuri, this, his offense, unfortunately, when you have 100% offense, um, that's also leaves you 0% available for defense on the stat bar. And mm -hmm. that's how he fights. I just think this is a horrible fight for him to do that. Um, love Rockets, just red leg kicks. I think that's the only exciting thing about him. He's a, he's a good wrestler, and Yuri's, I think, probably pretty easy to take down, especially because the way he leaves himself open. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, in my notes, it's just like, and Rockets, I, as much as I want to talk about him being boring, boring equals safe and safe against Yuri probably equals win. So give me Rockets here. Wow. Yeah, I'm going Yuri. I'm confident in Yuri here. I think Yuri's going to win by KO. Um, I think Alexander Rockets is becoming a boring fighter. Like you said, he was a guy that came in and, and fancied himself a striker. Hands were always just okay, but big kicks, big head kicks, big low kicks. Guy's legs are the size of a fucking semi, right? Gets hurt, blows his knee out, has never really fought top-level competition, in my opinion. He's fought Anthony Smith, but everyone has, right? Yuri Prohazga has fought everyone in Europe before he got to the UFC. He's been taken down. He's won fights off his back. This isn't going to... We just talked about it the last fight. Just because you land a takedown doesn't mean you're winning the fight. Yuri is super active off his back. He's going to work his way to his feet. He's going to land some elbows underneath the bottom, and he's going to work this guy. I think Rockets is going to slow down come the second or third round, and I think... Yuri Prohaz is going to finish him. I really do. Yuri's a wild boy. He's got some absurd power with some absurd techniques. He'll probably get knocked out at least once or twice in this fight. I agree. But he's going to come back to life. And he's going to finish this fight, I think, late. I think I'm going to play Yuri late. TKO, second or third round, I think is a good number. Him at plus money is a great number. Um, I've just never been a huge fan of Rockets. And if Rockets takes Yuri down and controls him and wins a boring decision, shame on Yuri because he knows training and being a samurai that that could happen um and yuri is very critical with every performance he's ever had he's very you know he's he's, he's a guy that studies himself studies tape and, and gets out there and usually has a good game plan um but uh, i like yuri big here if i'm being honest with you this could be a dog lock i know it's not really a dog but it could be a dog lock for me um i'm gonna go yuri prohaska timbo what do you like wait timbo before you break it down can you yeah. go look at Derek green's last comment uh Derek green's last comment Timbo's at the Super 8. You got the Super 8 has that beautiful backdrop. Look at that beautiful. Look at those headboards, bro. Okay, yeah, so I'm out in like the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, and this is called a true TRU by Hilton. Yeah, what, I've what heard of those. What a recommend. Not Wouldn't a recommend. That's I've heard a, of those, never stayed in one. That used to be a rap group, uh, Master P, uh, Pimp C, and Silk the Shock, I think. Silk the Shocker. Remember okay. Silk the Shocker? You ever, have you listened to any of that No Limit stuff now that you're an adult? It's oh, so yeah. bad. I still love it. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. Uh, no, I stayed at a Hampton Inn one time in like Yukon, where Yukon, shout out Connecticut, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, Connecticut, New York meet. We were driving the main, and that was the hardest bed I've ever stayed on. I mean, it was <laughs> hard. I just couldn't even take it. All right, Timbo, what do you like in this lightweight fight? I stay at Hampton Inns literally every other week. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> Or a Hilton Garden Inn, one of the two. But anyways, um, yeah, I can't bet against fucking Yuri here, man. Um, Brian had put us on to him before he was in the, even in the UFC. Ray, Rakic taking the, you know, having so much time off. Being compared to Yuri, you know, slow on offense. Um, I just think Yuri's going to be hungry. I think he got bullshitted in the, the hair fight. Mark Goddard fucked that up, made it, you know, about him per usual. <laughs> Check between the mattress and the box springs for some weed. My, <laughs> my buddy Smitty sent, you know, like 50 cent. This is the guy who I watch all my fights with. How you dare you bash the low limit soldiers? Let me tell you something. I'm going to bash them because they stink. And then Trin says mystical is still the best. One of the best lines in any rap song is I'm trying to get my dick sucked. What are you doing? <laughs> That's the fucking embezzlement. What are you Agreed. Doing? Agreed. That whole Ludacris album was really Was good. Mystical a No Limit soldier? Oh, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. he, he got locked up for uh, raping his hairstylist, the lady that braided his hair. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. why he disappeared Totally for normal. A bit. Totally normal. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's back to it now. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you like yeah. Yuri. Yeah. Do you, Yuri. How, do you like, how do you like Yuri, bud? Mm. Decision or KO? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously one of those. Yeah, yeah, one of those double chance. It might be nice. I mean, that's probably not going to be the juice number, but I, I'm glad you're on my side on that you one. That'll be the same as his money line. Exactly the plus money. I, yeah. I think that's crazy. And Slide the line for shifting as what well. What is the current line on him right now? Plus 100 on DK. Okay, good. Okay, so he's still he's still puppy dog plus money. All right, next up, my guy. I was gonna wear the Bo Nickel shirt, but I wore it on the Anakin Florian side. I don't want people to think I didn't change my clothes. Bo Nickel minus twenty one hundred versus Cody Brundage plus eleven hundred. That was a few days ago. This line is obviously jumping for obvious reasons. Um, Bo Nickel twenty one hundred still okay. Twenty one hundred still. I'll go first. You guys aren't a fan of Bo Nickel. I know you're picking him in this spot here. This is the first time he's fighting a wrestler. This is the first time he's fighting a guy in the UFC who has who has actually fights and wins in the UFC. He has, has wins by knockout and, and submission. I'm not going to sit here and act like Cody Cody Brundage is some world-class fighter. He's not, but he is going to be the first real test of like true MMA UFC caliber for low-level caliber for a guy like Bo Nickel. I like Bo here. I'm not going to play rounds. I see a lot of I, – I messed up and played him rounds before – and I missed it on the Jamie Pickett. So now I'm just playing finishes with Bo. How do you shave this number? You get a submission. It was plus money on some books. You can maybe find plus money on other books. I like him by KO, actually. I think he's going to clip Brundage. I think Brundage's whole camps go, can't let this guy out wrestle me. Can't let him submit me. I'm defending that arm triangle. I think Bo can do it on the feet. And if he gets him to the ground, doesn't find the submission, he's going to TKO him. I like Bo by knockout. It's uh, it, it's plus uh, 120 Plus 130, I think. So you're getting plus money on Bo Nickel finish. Um, I know most people are going to take him by uh, submission, which is fine. Bo Nickel by TKO, KOs, plus 140. I like that. That's how you shave off the uh, the 2100 price tag. But, again, I'm high on Bo Nickel. I think he's going to be future champion. I think he's a blue chip prospect. And I just hope he doesn't get bored with MMA because he was tweeting out about how he wants to do WrestleMania at one point in his career, and that worries me. Um, but give me Bo Nickel. Uh, Christian, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, I talked about with Sadiq Youssef earlier, um, experience is a factor, and I'm definitely considering going with the more experienced and diverse MMA fighter here. We got both of them on uh, finishing streaks right here, both of them coming off uh, back-to-back. Uh, no, both got one of each, and then uh, our guy Brunda just got a knockout and then a, a DQ win, which counts as a finish, at least for betting purposes. Um, Brundage is dangerous, dangerous early. If he does that guillotine, he's going to get fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um, the way this line is though, um, yeah, definitely give me Brundage here. He could, he could not, <laughs> he, he could not go out early. Both, both a decent wrestler. His hands are sloppy. Um, but yeah, go ahead and give me Brundage here. I could see him doing it. Um, in terms of your bet, I would also recommend just betting fight ends via KO. Cause, uh, I mean, Bo is live to tear his hamstring or his ACL or his, you know, break his ankle or something. Um, break his toe like John Jones did wrestling. So um, okay. that's good fucking advice. And I know you're joking, but that's actually good advice. <laughs> that's good fucking advice because yeah, crazy, some crazy shit could happen. I think and you could get the fight ends by KO. It's not you can get fight. And, you could get fight ends via KO at like plus one ten or maybe plus one fifteen. Anything versus. can happen, Tim. But I could hop on a red eye and be in Colorado in a couple hours and show up at this guy's door. I got anything can happen. But yeah, you know, I I'm gonna take Brundage in this fight. This maybe your worst pick ever. I hope you dog lock him too, and I can laugh you out the building. Uh, Timbo, go ahead. Who do you like here? Do you remember Sugar Sean O'Malley? Should I pull those receipts? Timbo, who yeah. Do you? <laughs> Taking nickel, and I'll just probably do a fucking five sided coin flip as far as how and when he finishes to try to get some value. I mean, yeah. it's not great, you know, crazy throwing five bucks on Brundage just in case of something. You know, again, it's fighting. Anything can fucking happen. Anything can happen, sure. Very, 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 very low chances of him winning this fight. Yeah, I just, I mean, I've seen Cody Brundage get dominated by too many people. His fights that he has won or like, I mean, he fucking took a, a, a punch to the back of the head against Maku and was like, oh, I can't, I can't fight. And they give him the win. Come on. That dude, that dude with that heart, he's going to be Bo. No chance. No chance. Bo Nick will come in there with his fucking hands tied behind his back and still take this guy down. Is this, um, is it, is this his biggest being a favorite odds thus far? No, he was. I think he was bigger against um, not that, Pickett, the the guy that he took, to, who he knocked out his last time Val, out. He took, Val he took something. 
Yeah, that Val, would burn. Yeah, he was a bigger favorite on that one. He opened up at like like 30. Like he opened huge. I don't know the exact number. I don't want to make up a number, but he opened bigger than when he is. So, All right, next up, we get a Chucky Olives, Charles Oliveira, plus 185 versus Armand Sarukian, minus 225. See a lot of love for Armand. Val Woodburn was his name. See a lot of love for Armand. See a lot of pictures of him on social media looking absolutely fucking yoked. I'm going Charles Oliveira plus money here, baby. I can't avoid the plus money on Chuck Yalos. He has so many ways to win. Uh, uh, Amon's been knocked out before. He's gonna, you know, he's been buzzed before in the UFC. I, I like Oliveira here. I think Oliveira's the best competition he's ever gonna fight on the ground and on the feet. Um, Oliveira's got his hair dyed. He looks focused. He looked good against Benny Dariush. Um, I like Oliveira, and I like Oliveira early. The more this fight goes, I'm worried that Oliveira will kind of start losing confidence and, and kind of give up. That's He's done that before. But I like Oliveira at the plus money here, and I'm going to play him double chance KO or sub. So that's my take. Timbo, what you got? I'm rocking with Charles Oliveira too, man. This dude, this dude has became one of my favorite fighters. Like, nice. He's just so fucking dangerous. Made fucking Justin Gaethje taste battery acid. If it goes to the ground, which Armin's got to take the – like, personally, I think Oliveira's fucking him up on the feet. And just because with power. I don't feel like Armin's got power like that where, where you know, Charlie Olives does. Right. And then, you know, Sarzuki may get the takedown, but just with how dangerous this dude is on his back, obviously can transition and find his way on your back in no time. Uh, it's a fucking tough fight. I mean, it – I think mm-hmm. this is fight of the night. This is the best match. Really? Wow. Okay. This is fucking just high level shit. Um, but yeah, with that said, I don't see Armin getting a finish. But yeah, I, I, I think I think Oliveira will. So give me give me old Chucky Olives here. I will say again, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know, we've had seventy concurrent watchers and viewers, and more people listen to us. I love every single one of you. Um, so I'll give you a little spoiler. Kenny Florian, heavy, heavy. And the guy's been on a roll, right? Kenny doesn't have anything to do now but watch fights and make bets, right? Heavy, heavy on Armand. And he loves, he loves Oliveira. That paused me. I went first, and when he was heavy on Armand, I'm like, oh, shit. Cause I, but listen, the plus money is great, so I can't, do the, uh, I can't go wrong with that. Christian, what we got here, babe? Is Kenny actually betting some of those? Because he has been on fire recently. I've noticed he that. He is starting. I know to he wasn't much of a better. Well, before. North Carolina now can have you have online betting in North Carolina as of as, as of March, whatever, which is very good for me because I'm going there in June. Um, and uh, he's been flirting with it. We've been texting, and he goes, he was very upset about the Morgan Charrier uh, loss last week. Yeah, he goes, How do you do it? A lot. How the fuck <laughs> do you how do you play this game? I would lost my mind. Cool. He clearly won. I said, bro, I know. It's tough. You that's, just gotta rebound. That's why and 14 fights in like it's like not like a football spread where it's just like, oh, it's stink. It's like, I all know. right, there's another fight. It's like yeah. they got well, they got exactly. OBB coming like, out here somebody. I got Chris coming up. I got and then Chris lost. I'm like, fuck. Okay, yeah. this thing's but he performed, so that's all I'm happy about. Um, all right, who do you like in this fight? All right. Um, so you said this is like, oh, this is his best competition, Sarukians. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's already fought Islam Makachev, who's already okay. beat Charles Oliveira. So it's not sure. his best competition. It is. It, on, um, short, on short notice, yeah. off the couch, you, that doesn't count. Any loss, which, by the way. Let's see. Which one of them, let me think. Uh, which one of them had a closer fight with uh, the pound for pound number one fighter Styles in the world? Who was that? Fights. Fights. Yeah. Yes. Styles. I, yes. Styles do make fights. Um, this is another thing. This uh, this is some things I've come across this week, and your your Vegas insiders, Ron Pellegrino, and yeah, big Ron, Jason Anik, yeah, Yanni the Greek, they'll tell you that like ninety percent of the public money is on Charles Oliveira because everybody loves him, mm-hmm. and this line hasn't moved an inch. Sure. So I don't know if it's just one dollar bets matching up a bunch of hundred one dollar bets matching up with one hundred dollar sure. bet, but man, I. I I'm this is one where like I love Charles Oliver like everybody else, but I'm fading the public on this because I it's I want to believe that he's gonna finish him. But what mm-hmm. I know and what I think will happen is that he probably will clip Charles like everybody else does, and he will jump right into his guard instead of letting him sit there for 10, 20 seconds on the ground to like unring his bell. Uh um, unring it. Yeah, that's unring tough, his that, bell. That's a tough ding. thing to do, is unring a bell. Ding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> 
uh, yeah, he, he's just not going to be scared. And I think once he get, I think he'll be able to hold him on top, no problem, stay out of the danger. Obviously, Charles Oliveira is the mo- probably the most dangerous fighter in UFC history. Uh, yeah, I mean, both with the hands and uh, he's, he's he's not going to be able to hang on the feet, I don't think. And who won? Uh, who won? I don't think yeah, the Charles Oliveira can hang on the feet. I think I don't think the Charles Oliveira is going to be able to hang on. You're the feet. out of your head. You know, Armand Sur- Surukian, second fight in his career, got knocked out, knocked dead by a left hook. What is Charles Oliveira's best punch? Oh, left hook. Joaquin Silva dropped. Joaquin Silva. How many wins he got in the UFC? Dropped Sarukian with what? A left hook. You're talking about stand up, bro? We're talking about stand up. Yeah, Charles Oliveira fucks him up. My, my concern, and there is legitimate, like, I would not be surprised if Armin wins this fight. I'm not. Sure. No, no, no. But we're, we're talking about stand up. But, I mean, it, yeah, it, I, I, I think Sarukian's going to get right. Yeah, I, I think Charles. I think his chin is too fragile. Sarukian's arms are this big. Okay? Yeah, he works. His way Seven, to win. They're one and a half inches shorter. I have the stats right in front of me. Yeah, one, one and a half, half inches shorter. And that's 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 point seven five inches per limb. Take all you know a lot about inches, bro. <laughs> yeah, little body point seven five inches. I know a lot about. <laughs> and hold them down and don't get sucked. That, that's going to be Armin, and do that for 15 minutes. Yep, yeah. exactly. And that's that's what I have down. I think he's going to put him down. He's going to lay on him, and he's going to hold him down. He's going to grind out a decision because that's where Charles is. I think he's dark, he's dangerous everywhere, but on his back against a guy with good top pressure, Charles does not like that. I mean, look at just, look at our boy Bag Out Bailey with a dope picture of him holding a fish. Right, Armand not winning this in the stand up. You're going to look at Bag Out Bailey and tell me that Armand is a better stand up than Charles Oliveira. Ballsy. Fucking ballsy. Bag out ballsy. Get him out of here, baby. Get him out of here. Bag out Bailey catches. Oh, bag out ball. What was I saying? Bag out Bailey? Shit. Bag out ballsy. Let's do that take two. Anyway, don't fish bag out ballsy. You're a fucking fucking minnow. That fish stinks. (laughs) Hey, bro. Hey, bro. (laughs) There's a guy on this podcast formerly that used to catch fish. We like people that catch fish, okay? Um, so you're taking Armand. Let's go to the BMF fight. Justin Gaethje, minus 170 versus Max Holloway, plus 142. Max got his shorts. I think they look fucking dope. Um, I'm glad they're doing I think I think all the fights should have been... Uh, <laughs> you said your fist is a bum. Uh, all, all, the fight, all the fighters should have got custom shorts. Someone showed Bobby Green's custom shorts. That they're not real, but someone photoshopped like a red bandana. Like pattern as the shorts that would have been fucking dope they all should have got custom shorts um especially charles Oliveira. um they but, literally every every champion should have they should, every champion should have if they gave a couple just everybody that's a champion because there's so many of them and it would have they been did he has got custom but he's just look like right Gage, well they're it's a black it's a it's a black and white american flag pattern Max so has the is, floral. Yan Shanon has enter the dragon chinese so does way lee oh they just did the top the top six fights Hey, uh, Pereira fighters. has him. I don't know what Jamal Hill has if he has any. I haven't seen no. his. Uh, Nickel and all they all have like a 300 logo on it. Gaethje shorts look like Cole's swim chunks. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, um, very like uh, Dagestanium to wear those like long shorts. Like I would have got one. The of Dagestanian those. fighters could wear shorts longer. They would like it's like the yeah. like college basketball in the mid two thousands. Like those Dagestanian dudes love their baggy shorts. All right, BMF title. Wait, 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 wait. I want to tell you about my custom shorts real quick. So you know how they have those like those shirts. Hey, you have custom shorts? No, I want to tell you about them. The ones I would get if I. So you know those guys have. Like those uh, those shirts where they put on and it has like the muscle bodies and stuff. Yeah, I would have gotten ones with like a like huge dick on the. Yeah, but the you're probably not fighting in those, bro. That's a great. <laughs> that's a great one. There was old Sunny episode a million years ago. It's always Sunny, one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite show. They had a dick towel. You ever seen that? So the guy. I think I've ta- seen that one. Well, it gets stuck on. in the bike or something, doesn't it? No, no, no. So he puts that- on a towel and it's a butt, and he turns around. And it's a huge old dick in the front. <laughs> right, you you're getting out of the shower, you're making your buddies laugh. And then that's just a setup because then you flip it and then it's a baby dick. <laughs> so you can rock either way. And my buddy was going to buy that for me for Christmas. We were doing Christmas gifts one year and they're sold out. We couldn't get them. And then they kind of like something happened legally. So they went away. But yeah, look up dick towel, dick towel.com. I bet it was an awesome site. It. All right. Uh, Tim, I walked away to go probably check on that fresh body in the uh, bathtub. Let's go. You Christian BMF Gaethje max. I love this fight. Have a lean on this fight pretty strongly. Fight I chewed on a lot this week. I think this is going to be a good fight, but I do have a good lean. Uh, tell me who you think. 
Timbo, you got back from the ice machine to pour the ice on the dead body that quickly. It's starting to stink in there, Timbo. Yeah. <laughs> I love I made that off joke and people were running with it. That's the that's just yep. the best. Uh man. So obviously this is uh I mean this is the best fight on this would be the best fight on almost any card. Okay. This is incredible. This is a fight I know a lot of people have been waiting for. I never even crossed my mind as it being a possibility. I'd always been kind of wanting to see the no, I don't care about Connor anymore, but Connor mm -hmm. Gaethje. Sure. But this is better though. It's just I yeah, it's just not something I ever thought about. Um it's going to be an issue for Max, though. Gaethje is, mm -hmm. I think, going to be too hard of a hitter. Um, I think his leg kicks. Max is steep. Max is a boxer. He's like a, a boxer in a in the octagon. Maybe like the purest one. Probably the best Max one. boxer in the UFC, um, baby. He yelled yeah, it. He yelled I, it I in the middle of a fight. I remember. Yeah, I, he, yeah, yeah. That was Calvin Cater, wasn't it? Yep, got it. Yeah, um, one hundred forty-five significant strikes. <laughs> it was wild. Uh, Definitely two completely different fighters, though. Uh, I mean, Cater is another pure boxer and obvious, obviously not on the same level. Gaethje has, I think, uh, you know, I've never had anybody kick me in the leg, but when Gaethje does kick people, it looks like it hurts. And it looks like his whole mm -hmm. body goes into it. It looks like he doesn't feel, he's willing to like, you know, the pain of how hard he kicks, he's willing to deal with putting that on somebody else's leg. You know, it always fucks his, his up every time, too. Um. Yeah, this is a five round fight. And, you know, Gaethje's been proven he can go three pretty good. He's proven he can go five pretty good, too. Obviously, mm -hmm. early in his career, he got finished late. Um, we haven't seen that lately. He's, he's been dominating the later the fight goes. He's looked better and better. Um, but his nose got fixed. I know we don't bring that stuff up very often, but it seems like, seems like it must have helped at least a little bit. Um, I think those light kicks are going to really start to add up after a few rounds. Not to mention that Gaethje's going to have more power in the hands. Um, Max has taken so many shots. This is going to be the biggest puncher he's fought in I don't even know how many years because he's only fought like the same. He's got like the Brandon Moreno schedule, the same five guys for two years. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Gaethje's, Gaethje's got kicks, he, but more kicks than I think any of us knew about. So I think, you know, he's got, I think the whole body is a target for him. Um, I, I see people loving Max. I just don't get it. I think he's just physically overmatched. And you know how much I love Gaethje. He's by far my favorite fighter. Nobody's even uh, close. No, no, wait, wait. You went to the same college or high school, whatever. The U. <laughs> yeah, the U. <laughs> University of Northern Colorado. Pious motherfucker. The Look Harvard of the West. The UNC Bias. Bears, baby. Um, so, I, I agree with all your takes, Christian. Yep. I do. So, um, that's my, I think he's going to knock, I think he's going to knock him out. Knock him out. That's my strong lean. I like Gaethje. I'm Slimeball can number two. Uh, I love Max. I've really grown to like Max. I think he's a dog in there. Let me tell you a little story. UFC 236, Elena George, your boy, was in the building. Who did who did Max Holloway fight? Dustin Poirier at 155. The only time I've ever seen Max struggle with power was Poirier. He almost got dropped several times. He got wobbled in that fight. You're going up and wait. And he's, and he's, he's probably done it better this time. He's... Look physically oh. better. He's a big guy at 145. I think, he'll, I think I, he'll look great. Yeah, he's done it better this time. But he isn't known for, like, big, big power. Yeah, he knocked out the Korean zombie. He overwhelmed you with punches. And he's never had good defense. I know he's got this legendary chin, but I'm telling you, when Gaethje swings from the hips and it hits you, it's a different kind of hit. He is so dense. That's why his kicks are flawless. His kicks are good technique. Everything does right, but he's so dense. Just like per, um, Pereira, just dense bone dudes, they're going to hurt more. And Max gets his legs chewed up. Uh, Max got his legs chewed up in both Volkanovski fights, made him switch to Southpaw. He switches to Southpaw. I know he probably spars in Southpaw, but guess what? Your defense, still a liability in Southpaw. I like Gaethje here. The longer the fight goes, though, I think you can probably spread a little bit on Max. I don't know if Gaethje can knock him out clean because Max has proven to be incredibly durable and tough, but I do think it's going to be a kind of like a Tony Ferguson effect where Max just gets beat up over the course of the rounds. He's going to look a little black and blue, and they're going to maybe call it in like the fourth or fifth with maybe a closed eye, orbital something. Uh, I'm looking for a BMF fight. This is going to be, this is going to deliver. Both guys bring it. But if we're in the third or fourth round and Max looks okay physically, and he's starting to pour it on because his cardio never empties and his volume is so big and good. And we've seen Jake, uh, Justin in the past, not lately, but have fade to guys who just keep putting it on. They're not going away. But the leg kicks are big. The power's big. I like Justin Gaethje in this spot. 
I slimed him up. I agree with you, even though I didn't go to college with him at some bullshit university. <laughs> um, I do agree with him. Uh, you, CC, that I like Gaethje here. So, Timbo, what do we got, babe? Um, good points about both of you. So, Max plus 136, Gaethje minus 162. I mean, we talk about, you know, oh, Max has been hit. He's been hit so often. Well, so the fuck is Justin Gaethje? This dude's been in wars where he's taking some fucking damage too. Look at the first Dustin Poirier fight. Look at fucking Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler had him rock. Michael Johnson had him rock. Charles Oliveira fucking rocked him and then finished him by sub. He ain't no spring chicken either. He's been he's had his fair share of um, you know, chinny moments as well. Sure. With that said, um, with this being five rounds, man, I think I'm gonna go max. Yeah. Nice. I'm glad you went opposite. You, you yeah, have the balls to do it. I don't see him getting finished. And I think after round two, when Justin Gaethje has tried to finish him, because Justin Gaethje wants to go out and finish Max. How big mm-hmm. of a feather do you have in your cap if you go out there and finish Max Holloway, who's never been finished? Or has been, finished, you know, has been knocked out. Has been knocked out. Has been knocked out. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be a huge feather in his cap. He's gunning for it. BMF, you know, fuck that, by the way. But, any, you know. <laughs> Five round nature of this fight. It's a cool looking belt. It is. Yes. Cool. Um, cool yeah, yeah I, I like it. But yeah, come round three, I think Max can take over the fight and win three, Ooh. four, five, and then take it to Ooh. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I flirted with Max Hart. I really did. But then again, I just, when I really dove into it, I'm like, man, if Gaethje's on point with his kicks and he, and he doesn't lose focus and he's in there. He's tough to beat, right? Especially if you're not wrestling him and taking him down and getting him tired. And and Max is a dog. I, I think what I'm doing, I think I'm underestimating Max's dogness, right? Because I've seen him take all these shots at 45, and in my head I go, yeah, but he can't take Gaethje's. What if he fucking does, right? That's the problem. Christian will cry. He'll oh, drive to Colorado Gaethje. State yeah. University and cry. What did you? Where'd you go? Sorry, I saw the the you. University of Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado. I thought you were a Ram. I thought you were a Colorado State, Colorado no. State Ram. Also, um, also, another point real quick. Yeah. We've only seen Justin Gaethje in the fifth round one time, and it was in that fucking layup fight against Tony Ferguson. Sure. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, I agree. We, we saw him in the fourth round where he was finished against Dustin Poirier. Mm-hmm. So, hey. Know, man. Hey. hey. I, 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 I like I like where your head's at, brother. Listen, I'm, I know I slimed him up. I'm disagreeing with you. On the pick, but I like where your head's at. Okay, fucking uh, with your slime this week, man. be honest with you. I'm not fucking with the slime. <laughs> I love it. Maybe we'll win this time. Let's go four weeks in a row. You ain't dead. I thought I had it last week with Morgan. I really did. Fuck yeah, off. Fuck uh, Zhang Wali minus 500 versus Yao Shanon plus 380. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be real short and sweet. I don't want to shortchange this female fight. I think it's gonna be electric. I think Yao Shanon is staying up, is really good. She's working with Team Alpha Male, she's working on the grappling. But that's where this fight's gonna lay. Uh, if 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 Wei Lee decides to bang with Yan Shanon, bad game plan, John Wood should be fired, her coach, because she has such a significant advantage on the ground. She's big, she's powerful, her takedowns are really good, her transitions are really good, her submission defense is really good, and her own submission game's coming alive here. I like Wei Lee here. I think this is could be a mortal lock across the board for anybody. Problem is she's very high. How does she get it done? I say maybe decision, maybe submission, TKO. Carlos Sparza took down Yashanan, TKO'd her pretty easily a couple fights ago. Yan's obviously getting better. She's getting his title fought, but I like Wei Li big here. Didn't slime her up. I could lock her up, but I like Wei Li Zhang in this fight. Uh, Timbo, who do you like? Wei Li Zhang gets her down, beats her up, gets the back, submits her probably pretty early. Dang, that's a confident man right there. Christian, what do you like? Yeah, most well-rounded fighter in women's MMA, maybe all of MMA, just complete uh yawn fish on the ground can't stop takedowns she's gonna get chewed up i mean even if it lasts 25 minutes she'll get to sh- even if it stands up for 25 minutes wow then she'll pr- i think yeah then you might get a 48 47 but that's not what's gonna happen she's okay. she's her wrestling's pathetic and until it changes i'm gonna keep saying that so yeah there you go he's Easy. gonna keep saying it all right man event time I guess We're here. Should have fucking wrestled against her and that's where she fucked up mm-hmm. what an hour 20 minutes one of our longest podcasts and we- I feel like we've only been here 10 minutes. This is a, we, we still got locks coming. I got my parlays coming. 
uh, at the end of the show. We've had like 70 something concurrent viewers. I think we're at like 60 right now. You guys are amazing. The chat's been oh, absolutely yeah. on fire. Sorry, we, I haven't gotten the chat as much as I, I normally do. It's just you guys have been on absolute fire. Appreciate every single fucking last one of you um, and the people that are on the audio side. All right, main event Alex Pereira or Pereira. Uh, minus 125 versus Jamal Hill, plus 105. This is such a fucking interesting fight. I'm really curious where your guys' heads are at in this fight because when it got announced, I thought, Alex, all the way. I really like Jamal Hill. Uh, he's he's kind of a phenomenon, right? Um, I guess I'll go first. I'll go first and get it out of the way. So I'm going with Pereira. I like Pereira. Slimeball can at number three. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So I like Pereira, but it wasn't easy for me. I think he has the better technique. He has a more experience. Jamal Hill had four fights or five fights against bombs, gets a contender series spot against an okay guy, finishes him, gets in the UFC and kind of lights this division on fire, a very thin division, but lights it on fucking fire, right? His only setback was he got his fucking elbow snapped by Paul Craig, right? Besides that, he's, he's, he's beating everyone. He's looked good. He looks like a dog. He's taking fights on short notice, going five rounds. He's knocking people out. Um, I love this fight on paper. Jamal Hill coming off the Achilles. He looks to be in good shape. He was really fat when he tore it. He got really fat in the beginning when you're when you're trying to recover it. He looks to be in great shape now. But I'm worried. He he re, he relocated everything to Vegas, which is smart to work on the work on the leg. But I'm worried about him going in there with a guy like Pereira who can kick and hit as hard as he does with perfect technique. Pereira can get cracked, right? Pereira can get fucking chin. You can find him. And Jamal Hill is not scared of Alex Pereira. He's not scared of him. He's going to come after him. Jamal Hill by knockout is very live. I like Pereira here by knockout. Timbo, what do you got? That's his biggest <laughs> flaw is that he's not scared of Alex Pereira. Look, I'm not picking against Alex Pereira until he fights a wrestler. Jamal Hill has not even attempted a takedown in the UFC. I hear people fucking talking about, oh, he may go wrestle. Not, not that it pro would probably be that big of a, you know, uh, it wouldn't be that difficult to probably get Pereira down. But I think he's bitch-made if he does it, and I don't think he's bitch-made. So I think he will keep it standing. And if you're standing with Alex Pereira, you're going to get knocked out. So Yuri learned that, and I think Jamal Hill will as well. So I'm going with uh, Alex. And that would be without the fucking Achilles and, and everything that people's talking about, which will be used as an excuse likely when he loses. Sure. I'm going with with the poet <clears throat> name here. Paul Tom, Alex Pan, Tom, um, Christian. Yeah, I thought one so, of us was gonna add something in my throat. Yeah, talk. So when you when you were apologizing to the chat, lazy bed, sir, he said, "And I'm gonna do my best accent. It's all good, brother, brother <laughs> man. Mahalo, hanapa. <laughs> <laughs> to be the to be the best, you gotta be the best. And the yeah. best." <laughs> To be the best, you gotta be blessed. <laughs> you good, uh, All right. I so, get this uh, thing in my throat, everyone. I just had I had bronchitis like two weeks ago, and it wasn't that bad. But I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just like start coughing. I got like four different waters by my bed, and it just hit me now. But we're good. We're good. Charm. Uh, go ahead, Christian. Uh, what does uh, that mean? Sorry, by the way? What does that mean? What? Charm. I mean, let go. Let's go. Jamal oh, Hill shook his hand and was it was like, hey, what does that fucking mean? It just means like let's go. Oh, like, let's go, Chama. Okay. Yeah. Like eh so, eh so. Uh okay, so yeah, I'm not surprised that you guys are on Alex Pereira because you've been dick riders of him since I mean from the beginning. There you go. Wouldn't surprise me <laughs> that, you, that you scrubs guy. would make such a pathetic pick on such an important fight. But yeah, I know that people don't I, if you know, if if Dana didn't overhype this fight, I this is it's a a it's an A grade fight. It's just not an A plus grade fight. There's this, they're not huge names, but it's such a cool matchup, and I'm happy to see it. Alex Pereira is somebody I've always doubted, and I paid for it both with my pride and with my and with Bank my money. Account. And um, you're gonna pay for it again this weekend. Yes, yeah. but you want to bet? <laughs> I want to <laughs> bet, man. All right, well, let me tell. I'll break it down and tell you. Tell your story, stupid, and, and then we'll. And then we'll make a bet. Um, so yeah, I Alex Pereira is somebody I see scraping by in a lot of these fights. Um, he's pulling that Yuri thing where it's just his lights haven't been completely shut off. I see him getting clipped and just about to go out. I I think his chin is like is barely there. I mean, 
Izzy, that's the only guy Izzy's knocked out since like the late, since probably the late nineties or something like that. Since UFC five, I mean, the guy's got no power left in him. And Alex Pereira went down to that. Um, he's so hittable. Like, I don't, I don't ever look at that striking defense stat. I have UFC stats pulled up. I should pull it up real quick. Uh, um, but I bet it's terrible. I bet it's his ratio is negative because that dude is always getting touched up. It's not. <laughs> oh no, it's not too bad. Well, he must only get hit by power shots then and just, <laughs> and just miss all the jabs. Um, all right. Well, that backfired on me. All right. In terms of, uh, some other intangibles, I think, uh, Jamal Hill, just in terms of pure athleticism, it's going to be much better. Alex oh, Ryder's like a born and bred, um, uh, just kind of born and bred fighter. Jamal Hill, I don't know what he did. I mean, I get we know he plays basketball. Uh, is this a basketball game? Well, I'm sure that – well, I'd say that you know, footwork in basketball would help, but Jamal Hill's footwork's all over the place. Um, I <laughs> Man, he's, you guys are really picking me apart. <laughs> Look how far, I, I'm not going to say anything else. You're getting flustered. Go ahead. Tell, give me so, a take, bro. I do think he's the more dangerous fighter, too. Okay. I do think he can knock him out. I mean, not that he, he – neither of them ever submitted anybody, so I don't imagine sure. they would. But I think if they're going to wrestle, then uh, Jamal Hill's going to win the wrestling. But why? Because uh, he's never even attempted to take down. So why do you? Yeah, think? I don't think Alex Pereira has ever. I don't think he's ever taken. I don't. He probably. I, yeah, Alex. Alex took down Izzy. Oh, oh yeah, well, that doesn't, yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. Doesn't I mean, I, I'm just saying. I was just saying he did at the end of the round. He nice double. He's yeah, not taking I, I remember that. I, that was I, shocking. Yeah. I remember that. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Um. <clears throat> okay, so the number one thing. After you guys have chewed apart all of my arguments, I'm like, not oh, saying I, I made the wrong choice. And don't worry, your face says it all, and you're <laughs> laughing into the microphone says what, uh, what your face doesn't. So nothing. Jamal Hill's toughness and his durability. I will never forget when he was beaten with this broken, dislocated arm onto uh, that was a Paul Walker, Paul Craig. Um, What's the piece? What's yeah, that. Like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, give it to me. Look, you guys are wrong, brother. Brother, you guys are wrong. All right. You, yeah, I'm going with Jamal Hill here. I, I, think I, I don't, I don't, I don't hate the pick. The I just think he's, I think he's bigger, more athletic, better chin. I, I think Pereira's chin's weak. I don't know what you guys aren't seeing here. I, okay. I know it's a close fight to see either of them get knocked out wouldn't surprise me, but I just feel like I'm on this island, lonely island no, over here. I, I thought one of us, one of you guys, I mean, obviously I knew what I was going to pick. I thought one of you guys would take Jamal Hill. I think it's a good pick. I What's flirted with Jamal line? Hill a lot. I don't but, say Jamal Hill's win seriously whatsoever. He hasn't beat anybody. Beating a forty-five-year-old Glover Teixeira doesn't impress me. That's that's what it is. His 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 competition isn't elite, you know. And well, uh, I would have pulled up topology, coming so off I had an injury in of like an Achilles, pretty fucking quick too. Being that overweight now coming back, it has his camp been training? Has it been getting the weight down? I don't know. Pereira, though, is so smooth on the feet. And, yeah, he's hittable, but you can't get hit by him, dude. That left hook, he's so dense. Those kicks, the left hook, the right hand, everything's powerful. I mean, Find me up the middle, baby. He's a stud. And and listen, I I will I, – I, I think you have a fucking uh, – <laughs> Preston says, I'm with you, CC. Kick rocks, BP. Yeah. I think it's – I think right, it's I think it's a, a good pick. I, I, I'm I not clowning your pick. I'm clowning your analysis, that's all. Saying that Izzy hasn't knocked anybody out since 05 or whatever you said, that's crazy. And then and then saying that Pereira is is chinny, I mean, is a little crazy as well. But, um, yeah, I don't hate the pick with Jamal Hill. All right, let's go. We got to get out of here. I'm getting – I haven't eaten yet. It's 9 o'clock. God dang. All right, so – I'll give my all my parlays now, and then we'll do locks at the end. So you guys go over, think about locks, whatever. Remember, I am defending champion. <laughs> yes, you are. Kicked the shit out of Christian last time we did. All right, so yeah. oh, slime thanks for not bringing ball that up. parlay. This slime ball parlay. Get your pens and papers ready. Ben. Alex Pereira. This has already been placed, by the way. Lines could be different where you're at. Alex Pereira, Justin Gaethje, Diego Lopez, plus 371. I wanted it over 300 for UFC 300. So that is parlay number one. Parlay number two, and still all the champs going to defend. That is Pereira, Whaley, Gaethje at plus 279. And then the OH, baby, the OH parlay. Oh. Kayla Harrison, Cody Garbrandt, plus 329. All three of those have been placed 
plus the green hammer of Calvin Cater, plus three and a half point spread. Ooh, I'm a rich man. Ooh, I'm a rich man, baby. Let's get to the locks. Um, I go first because I'm, I'm, huh? I go first because I'm the champ. What do I want here? Um, hmm. I can save my mortal lock because you guys aren't taking them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Ba 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 ba. Where where, where are my dogs at? Where 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 are my dogs at? Uh, I'm going to take Yuri Prohaska as my dog lock. He's a puppy dog. I'm kind of skirting the rules because he's plus 100, plus 105, but I'm taking him. I can't lost. Okay, this is dog. Okay, this is dog. All right, boys. Uh, let's go, Timbo. Timbo, what's your uh, what's your dog lock? Dog lock. Give me Yusuf. Yusuf. And I hate it. I hate it because I'm going against your slime ball, and I'm religious to the slime ball, bro. You are. You are, and that's okay. You can you can go against me. This is this is completely fine. Uh, You are a a rider of the slime ball. That is without doubt proven. Christian, who was not a rider of the slime ball, uh, (laughs) I haven't been the slime ball in two years because I haven't agreed with that. Uh, Kristen is the grease ball guy. Every time he gets on here, it's like the grease ball parlay. I was like, all right, okay, tweet it out. He doesn't fucking tweet it out. All right, uh, go ahead, Christian. What do you got? Dog lock. Um, give me Jamal Hill. That's an easy one. Easy. I don't have very many dogs this week. I mean, him or Cody yeah, Brundage are my two top choices. Bit. Yeah, well, Cody Brundage. Cody Brundage real, is live. Could have been a real, real good choice there, Timbo. Yeah. What do you got? You got mortal lock. You got send him home. What do you want to take, babe? Um. Shit, my bad. You're good. A lot of options. Yeah, give me um, – I'm going to play this safe. There's really two that I'm looking at the most. But I want my strap back, god damn Hey, it. yeah. Give me Mortal. Give me Kayla. Kayla Harrison, Mortal Lock, Timothy Mitchell. Okay. Christian, Mortal Lock, babe. See, I don't. I try to give the people my best pick at reasonable odds, something they could bet. I'm not like <laughs> Timbo, off. just tr- trying to get that piece of here, plastic around setup. my way. Here's the setup. He's gonna take Zhang Wei Li. Is this a setup? You doing a bit? No, because I'm gonna take <laughs> uh, a guy whose odds are collapsing by the day. One of the best fighters in UFC history. Yeah. Give me Gaethje. <sighs> I knew. Wow. I knew it was gonna be him. Some Did you guys out. like? Are you guys like Wiener cousins or something? Did you guys bump dicks in Northern Colorado? Is that why you're so? So it could uh, be in love but I, not that I know of. I don't I don't know. My mortal lock. Definitely possible. It's a mortal lock and I'm gonna wheel. Wait. Diego Lopez. You thought I wasn't gonna do it. I'm doing it. Diego Lopez, baby. Mortal wow. lock. Christian, Ooh. send him home. Who you got, baby? Uh oh shit, I just thought of it. It was uh oh easy. Devin Figueredo gets the chiniest guy at 135. <laughs> Oh my god, that's an easy one. Oh my gosh, that's an easy one. All right. Uh my send him home is going to be you know what? I I I, I gotta double down on Bo. Bo by but it won't count. Oh. Hang on. Yeah. It won't it won't count. I won't count the extra point. It has to be by knockout. If he submits him, I won't okay, count as a send him home. Has to be by knockout. Has I to be by it. knockout. Okay. Because that's what I that's what I'm playing and that's what I think. Submission doesn't count for me. All right, uh, Timbo, last pick of the uh, of the thing. It's Christian. Christian picked him. Christian already picked a cinema, didn't he? Yeah, he picked yes. Devison. You oh, got to pick your cinema. Your last one. Okay. Uh, give me. Give me Pajara, man. I'm talking. Pajara. Alex Pajara. You guys remember when I took Oliveira as my mortal dog and send him against Poirier? That was nice. It was. <laughs> hey, you remember that one time he took Cody Brundage? What was that, four that years was, ago? And I'm reflecting so, on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember my bets, too. I remember, like, my first real big win when I started the podcast was Darren Till at Dog Money over Donald Cerrone. That was, like, a big win for me. And then something that no one else saw that I saw and I woke up or I stayed up early and watched it was Wally Zhang over Jessica Andrade. And I played... Zang, who was he was an underdog, and I played her by knockout. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm the fucking oh, greatest dude. guy in the world. That felt good. So some bets really stick with me. So I'm I'm glad the Oliveira bet stuck with you. All right, listen, boys, this was a whole fucking hell of a lot of fun. 
You guys are the best. I'm so glad Timbo got to join us this time. Uh, Christian, you know, you were here last time and got the shit kicked out of you, but I'm glad you're back. I'm sorry we chirped some of your picks here. We're opposite. <laughs> One of us is going home happy. One of us is going home fucking happy. You are opposite on quite a few of these. And let's just say, let's just, if Cody Brundage wins, you're the champ, right? If Cody Brundage wins, you're the champ. I got to go eat some food. Believe it or not, this thing doesn't store as much leftover food. When you don't eat all day, you get fucking hungry. The chat, you guys are the best. MMA, this is UFC 300. I'm getting a little emotional. Not really like emotional, emotional, but MMA has changed my life more ways than one. I appreciate it. I also appreciate no one really mentioning the giant cyclops on my head. You guys are unbelievable. I love you. I love you, chat. Let's have a day, babe. Let's have a weekend. I'll see you. See ya.